이것이 하늘의 검! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. 2016 League of Legends KESPA Cup Round of Eight. We're into our final day here in Seoul with SK Telecom taking a very unique game number one over MVP. Yep, and uh, they piloted a very interesting Galio pick to success, and that champion just did not die at the later stages of the game. Now, MVP has had a little bit of time to regroup, uh, about eight minutes or so in the back room, and I'm curious to see if they're actually going to ban the Galio, and I don't know if they have realized in time that, hey, actually, we, we did have a superior team composition, but we didn't play against it properly, and we didn't really coordinate properly against the Galio pick, and I mean, looking at it, that was actually the truth. We got to see a little bit of uh, examples of that coming to fruition early on, where in straight up 5v5s, it was really difficult for SK Telecom to find wins uh, until they had managed to just constantly pick apart MVP and get all these big advantages over them uh, because of captured opportunities. But we'll see if uh, MVP is actually going to be forced to ban Galio here in game number two, and that would be very scary uh, because that's a very big victory for SK Telecom. Uh, now, if, if you're expecting a Galio pick coming at you again, but it's before picks and bans, uh, what do you really prepare as champions to run into that? What's your go-to Galio counter for anybody who's got to experience uh, dynamic queue a little bit later on? Flex well, queue. There we go. That's the, uh, that, I mean, that's the point, basically, is MVP, they had a better team composition. You had all that you could ask for inside of the Chaos Storm, and inside of uh, gravity, gravity field. field, right? The only other, uh, you know, AP mid laner maybe that you could want against a Galio in terms of canceling him would maybe be like a, a Kossadin or uh, something of that nature, but that's not going to be as good as a victor. So MVP, I still feel like they had the better team comp, but they didn't run it to success. And now they're the ones on the red side being forced to ban the Syndra, and they might ban the Galio too. There's also a ban against Ian, the Varus coming out, so pretty uh, pretty understandable. Should see a Nidalee ban here any second now, just because that champion has been Victor ban 100% with one exception at that game yesterday that didn't make a whole lot of sense. So when it comes to the bans here, uh, relatively understandable. Uh, but like you said, it'll be interesting to see whether or not MVP commit to the Galio ban just to take that unexpected pick away from Faker. Yep. Then now, it's a rumble for Prophet. What's a... Did you feel like his rumble was really something that was too difficult to deal with? Well, it's it's just one of the matchups that uh, enables you a way to actually bully Poppy uh, to a point where there's very few instances until she hits three or four items where she does start bullying you. Uh, and that's a very big difference comparatively to Jace or so, where Poppy can really start taking it to Jace uh, just after she completes her Sunfire Cape. And there's the Nidalee ban by SK Telecom. Both of their junglers really incapable of playing that champion, even though Bengi did have a performance on it at Worlds in the finals that was pretty good. Um, it's not a champion that they are very comfortable with. All right, so there's a, it's going to send us in to uh, picks with our final ban, like you said, being that Olaf. Uh, some jungle attention, but what's the first pick going to be for SK Telecom? Uh, Galio still on the board, but uh, the Ryze hovered over first off the bat. This is what is most interesting to me, because, I mean, Rai is not a champion without his counters, but as one of the best mid laners still available after these incoming bans, uh, what do you think about Rai as a first pick for SKT? Uh, Rai right now has some pretty good matchups in mid lane, and he's not a bad champion by any means, and certainly one of the uh, more oppressive mid laners if he does happen to get ahead. And so, Faker on Rise is always a treat to see. <laughs> oh, MVP hovering over the Galio. I uh, hesitate to see if that'll be locked in. Maybe you know, this is one of the unique situations where MVP was preparing the support Galio or the mid lane Galio all along, and Faker just beat them to it by a game. But wouldn't expect to see that locked in, and they're going to swap it up to uh, what could be the lock in on this lane. Uh, this is what I call the revenge lane because they get to do to SKT what SKT just did to their duo lane in the end. Swapping it around, it's going to be a Poppy and Ash yep. for MVP. So there is Ed getting his Poppy yet again. It's probably his most comfortable champion right now, so he's always going to feel happy to manage to get that champion. And the, uh, the Ash being picked uh, preemptively, definitely again, soft counters. Any Jin or Caitlyn attempts. 
and uh, hovering the vein. I think uh, if there was any champion for, for Bang to try to pull out here in the end uh, that would make him get subbed out for the next game, <laughs> Vayne might be it. Uh, it's actually interesting. Uh, we were watching SKT uh, walk in, and they uh, they brought aiming with them. So was really uh, hoping that maybe we saw that substitution. Either way, it's not going to be a vain pick. But hovering over the uh, the Zac as well. Now, I mean, talking about hovers is probably not necessarily super. Uh, uh, impactful, but that's kind of what I felt about the Galio pick there towards uh, the end of last game, and it wound up getting locked in. So just trying to look at the possibilities coming their way uh, for the uh, for the jungle role. We actually talked about how important that was going to be because it might be one of the lanes that MVP were going to do the best in because of how beyond uh, how strong Beyond looked last season. Now this time around, SKT have already secured one of, if not the best jungler left over. Yep. So uh, Bang is going to be on that Elise pick with uh, Bang piloting the Chin. And, I mean, so far the team composition is just pretty standard, uh, whereas if we look at MVP, again, they were just hovering the uh, Galio, and now they hover the Malzahar and the Zyra. So Ash Zyra coming out potentially for MVP, and that is one of the stronger bot lanes currently existing in the meta. Uh, Karma, however, still available for SK Telecom. Wouldn't be surprised if they actually pick that up. Alternatively, uh, Tom Kench does seem to be very good as Ash and Malzahar are locked in for MVP. Tom Kench would be a pretty hard counter to both of those two and, champions. And you can't forget who you're playing against. This is against SKT. Wolf was the support player that debuted that Misfortune pick against the Zyra at Worlds. So, uh, really, you pick the Zyra into an unpicked support and can't blame Wolf for hovering or at least thinking about grabbing that Misfortune here. Any other support picks? Okay, well, swapping it over to the Tom Kench. Uh, we've seen uh, Misfortune be used as such a heavy counter to, to Zyra. What would be the, the thought to forego it for Tom Kench here? Well, one of the components to the Zyra is also just the Ash. It's not just Zyra by herself. Uh, while Zyra is pretty oppressive by herself, it really does depend also on who her AD carry is. Uh, Jin being one of the other good ones of them, but uh, MF uh, is a component that generally you only see with Ash. You don't generally tend to see MF and Jin or MF and Caitlyn. Uh, so it, it's not like you can just simply pick it on the premise that Zyra has been picked by the enemy team. And I, now uh, Beyond gets his choice of counter picks in the jungle. And it looks like he is hovering Rek'Sai. And that is a champion that he did very well on in LCK Summer. It is definitely, I believe it's the second highest win rate uh, champion there. So we'll finish it off for MVP with a Rek'Sai lock-in. That'll be going up against Elise. This is sort of the uh, El Clasico as far as it comes to jungle champions nowadays with uh, Nidalee sort of stuck in uh, stuck in Cassid in prison for now. So not going to be seeing her. This is the final, line, final roster for both sides. So given these two team comps here, who do you think came out ahead, or is this really just both teams playing to their strengths? Uh, I mean, at this point, MVP's team composition with the Malzahar is pretty nice, but the Tom Kench is able to shut down a lot of the things that MVP wants to do. So uh, we just have uh, SK Telecom piloting a very standard team composition. And, you know, uh, when it comes to bread and butter, SK Telecom is one of the best teams in the world at doing that. And so MVP with a, a little bit of a pick comp in a way, going to have their work cut out for them against SK Telecom here. Uh, but they do have the Malzahar, and Malzahar opens up a lot of creative possibilities for Baron plays later on and a lot of control if SK Telecom does manage to mess up somehow. Certainly have to keep an eye on that. Faker on his rise. Uh, not a one, not one to use skins, but you know, if you wanted to, you could definitely grab that one for yourself. Uh, heading into this, our second and potentially final game of this round of eight best of three series. So really excited to see a, uh, another Malzahar pick, not a champion we've seen too much before Kespa Cup, but certainly had its fair share of representation. So on your screen, this is SK Telecom T1 Profit. New top laner up there for SKT. Bengi, Faker, Bang, and Wolf to round out their roster. Going up against MVP. ADD, Beyond, Ed, or Ed, not ADD, Ian. And then Maha and Max down there in the duo lane. So get out there, hashtag Kespa Cup, and of course, hashtag SKT or hashtag MVP to show which team you are supporting. So we get into game number two of this semi quarterfinal match.
As the crowd cheers, I am still trying to figure out what a semi-quarterfinal match is. We're going to get into it. It is the round of eight. Game number two with SK Telecom up one to zero. Starting out with some potential shenanigans. Down here in the bottom lane is Faker is waiting in the wings. Four men strong. One of the few games we get without a big fan across the map. Yep, and uh, definitely some room for creative uh, openings level one here. Lots of slows and even a snare if Max does... No, nope, he does not elect for that opening on the uh, Zyra skills. And so Faker going to be spotted out here. Going to also spot out Ian, but they don't know if Ian has uh, actually placed a ward down anywhere. So they will have to keep that in mind. And other than that, looks like we're going to have a standard start up in top. So keeping an eye on at least the jungler so far, Bengi is on his Elise and, and beyond on a now manaless uh, jungler. So going to be interesting to see how these routes uh, shape up. So what should we really expect to see uh, from both of these junglers starting on their respective sides? Well, the problem is, is if you look at MVP's team composition, uh, they don't really have a way to kill anyone except in bottom lane because Malzahar is not going to deal any damage early on. Uh, Poppy not going to really have a way to kill Trundle early on, uh, unless Trundle really overextends. So Beyond basically just going to be looking to play control and support for his team. And uh, if he can find a kill in bottom lane, then he's certainly going to want to do that. But Ian might be handed the blue buff, and that actually is going to help him a lot in punishing Faker's rise here in this matchup. All right, so that will be one uh, example. Faker, though, will place a ward just to see exactly what's going on and get any additional information that he uh, can. Level 2 hit there first for Faker as he shoves the wave into Ian. So we'll see if that... Uh, that's not going to be what makes the difference there, although uh, I think Faker in his round of 12 match actually did wind up getting a solo kill between his level 2 and 3 power spike, so certainly a lane to keep an eye on. And a little bit of trading happening. Oh, yeah, missed by Bing right there. Subtle little dodge will uh, avoid getting locked down by that deadly flourish. And uh, you were actually mentioning, you know, no kill potential here unless Prophet really messes up. But uh, Ed in his FOMO's interview uh, a couple days ago actually mentioned that that's a lane that can be a skill matchup. But here comes Rek'Sai up the top. Yeah, this actually was a pretty big mess up by Prophet. He's going down. Oh my goodness, too far out and beyond. You know, pulls Ayankos, grabs that first blood for his team, or at least helps them take it out. Nice enough though to hand it over to Ed, thus nullifying my analogy. But great uh, positioning up there and uh, committing the cardinal sin you mentioned earlier. Yeah, and now because of that gank up in top lane, uh, as you can see here, Bengi knows that, hey, I can actually come in and steal the blue and there's no way to really kill Faker as Beyond does not have his flash available and he's running over to blue. He's going to get there not in time, but they probably will now know that, yes, Bengi is indeed there. Yep. The, uh, the saddest prey seeker running through the blue and not picking anything up. So returning to this top lane, uh, beautiful gank by Beyond. Yeah, so Beyond basically came up here. Prophet extending too far forward. Uh, we didn't get to see it in the replay, but he chased uh, Ed back to the very top of the edge of the map, uh, touching the trees at the very top. And because of that, that was too far forward. And speaking of which, uh, <laughs> overextension, Ian a little too overextended, having to trade both summoners for Bengi's flash. Good trade out there, and of course Faker is sort of reaping the benefits of his jungler heading towards the mid lane, taking out his opposing mid laner's uh, summoner spells, and now uh, is content to farm there at the turret. So uh, with no summoner spells there for Ian, and double up for Faker, definitely a lane to keep an eye on us now, beyond making his way down to the bottom half of the map. No level 6 is down here quite yet, but still looking for any gank opportunities. And right now... Uh Okay. <laughs> the uh, elects out, apparently. That is the, uh, yeah, the unsuccessful uh, gank towards the bottom. Now, uh, we talked about the summoner spells being down in the mid lane, and without anything uh, going on on the bottom half of the map, what do you think is the real uh, is the real purpose of Bengi spending so much time helping Faker out here in the mid lane? Right now, Ian uh, is a little bit pressured underneath this turret, as uh, doesn't have a very good, reliable way of farming this wave out. And now Bengi going to get some vision around mid, and basically it's all about pressuring Malzahar uh, early on, and Faker with a little late of a recall, generally rises, do want to recall sooner to get that tier of the Goddess. Um, but he's still going to be able to pick up tier and boots nonetheless, and just some trading happening up there in top lane, and not really much is happening, so expect nothing to really happen also until Ian hits level 6, or uh, when Ed hits level 6, maybe we're going to see some fireworks fly from beyond. 
We've already seen a lot of that. Now Maha forced to flash away from the Deadly Flourish. Okay, uh, nice uh, pincering in onto Maha, forcing that summoner out. And for right now, we have a uh, little bit of harass maybe attempted by Wolf. Definitely would have been actually very good to deny the recalls. He actually did get the deny on Maha, so not going to uh, not going to be able to head back. Now Faker heading down to the bottom half of the map. He is level 6, so he will be able to reposition with his ultimate. Now, will be spotted out by Ward and beyond secluded in that tri brush. Sees what's happening. Will back off as well. Maha still kind of imprisoned down here, not allowed to leave this bottom turret. He may be forced to pay here as here comes Faker, positioning as far forward as possible. Will get the lockdown there on Maha. Uh, but with MVP piling in after him, uh, I think it's actually a pretty good spot for them to be in. Teleport completed there by Ed. Ian, though, with a roam down bottom. And SKT forced to blow all their flashes to disengage. Now still looking for something as Wolf gets pinned against the wall. He will not flash uh, to survive and winds up going down in the end. Well, he can't flash there anyway. If he ends up flashing, he's going to die uh, basically right where Ian is right now, except on the other side of the wall. Uh, there's no way out for him at that point. He doesn't have level 6. It's not like he can flash the wall and then try to uh, take a voyage away. So conserving his flash is definitely going to be a lot better because it'll help with ganks and surviving ganks later on. And taking a look at this replay, uh, you can see that they weren't expecting Beyond to be here probably, but his uh, star sense tingling as he felt like Faker might have been coming back. And so because of that, they're rewarded with getting a kill onto Wolf and getting a lot of summoner spells out of SK Telecom. And this is a very big turnaround that MVP wanted to have. And very yeah. good counter game. And, and good explanation about uh, the saving the flash. you got to kind of play the percentages, say, well, not worth it. I'm going to die here anyway. Uh, Wolf making the hard decision and uh, taking one for the team kind of there uh, in the end. And, uh, earlier, I guess Beyond had kind of seen Faker down there thinking about heading back. And right place, right time, great position by the MVP jungler who has been uh, instrumental in their advantages so far. Now up the top lane, here comes Bengi to try to get Profit back into a good spot. Now he is going to be able to subjugate Ed and here comes Bengi around the corner. A little bit too early there on the cocoon. Will not be able to go in for the dive. Ed able to survive that gank at uh, not much of a loss. And with Beyond coming up here and showing himself, that gives SK Telecom in the bottom lane the, the go-ahead, actually. Uh, curtain call, bottom lane channeled out here. We'll see if they can find anything. Maha down to below half after taking that big crit at the end. Voidling's hitting Faker, but he's actually going to get some gold out of them, which is very fortunate for him. And now, I mean, with both junglers having been exposed, this is actually really problematic for uh, the bottom lane of MVP because Bang and Wolf are in the driver's seat, and they're hurting Maha and Max really badly, as you can see. Almost, uh, well, there's a 21 CS gold lead, or 20 CS, 21 CS lead for SK Telecom. Starting to get a little bit rough there, but as we do see the lanes continue, you know, we haven't broken lane phase. It's nine minutes in. Both junglers still out there impacting the map. Here comes Bengi once again, this time bottom lane around the corner. Don't believe he's been spotted out just yet, so he'll get into a great angle there. Flash Cocoon in there on Maha. <laughs> Wolf tasting that kill away for himself. That's the first kill on the board for SK Telecom. Yep. And that's going to be very unfortunate for them as that results in the Inferno Drake being captured by SK Telecom. And this is really big for them because of the Jin and the Rise. And so uh, them dying to this is very bizarre because you can see that they, they probably could have an inclination that this is coming because Bengi can't be anywhere else on the map. You know that he's not going to be top lane. You know he's not going to be mid lane. And so the fact that Maha and Max aren't playing defensively, assuming that he might be bot, Whoa. is very strange. Engaged there by Faker. Max, Max forced to flash underneath the turret. Stranglethorns will not knock anyone up. And that's actually going to be Max's survival. Faker going back under turret to try to find the kill, but he just can't. And uh, a big engage there by SK Telecom doesn't wind up paying off. Yep. Right now, Wolf actually managed to steal away that Scuttle Crab using the Devourer to take it away. Whoa, oh, top man. lane, Ed Boy in a little bit of trouble. Survives just barely. Very similar to the situation on the bottom half of the map with MVP just able to get out alive. So SK Telecom piling on the pressure, not finding anything off of it, or, or any kills off of it, but able to put themselves in good spots in the lane. And as we move forward right now, Ed gonna go back up to top lane and 
conserving his teleport because there could be some sparks to fly in bottom lane in a few moments here. Malzahar has his ultimate. Faker in mid lane just has his flash up. And so right now we're going to take a little bit of a, a breather probably. Uh, and, you know, at, sometimes when I say that, some chaos ends up breaking loose. <laughs> and bottom lane curse. is a little bit vulnerable right now given that Max doesn't have his flash and doesn't have his exhaust. So we might see Tom Kench actually ulti Bengi into the back line of MVP here in this bottom lane. Not scouted out, they are on a pink ward. No one in lane though, so not really anything to force them to pull the trigger or to uh, trigger them to pull the trigger, as it were. Either way, the breather you were mentioning earlier, we can all adjust our chi a little bit and keep an eye on the map. Uh, at, at this point, I mean, we're 10 minutes in, 11.20 now, and uh, who's really at, uh, you know, the, the advantage? I mean, the, the advantage, there's that Inferno Drake that SKT has taken. Has that really kicked in to really give them a big lead? Well, the Inferno Drake, depending on how Bengi elects to build, is going to play a very big part for them because Jin and Rise are known to get enormous amounts of AP and, obviously, AD. Uh, and so Bang is going to oh, benefit from that. still don't know that uh, Beyond is down there. And instead, we're going to focus on the mid lane as Ian does escape just barely away from Faker. He's going to rush just as far as he can to try to grab Ian and Beyond, neither one of them falling prey to it. Uh, really surprising uh, that SK Telecom are being uh, stymied at so many different gank opportunities. Beyond just walking around to clear vision right now, and not much can really happen, but... Oh, okay, Prophet gonna cast his ultimate, go back up to full. Or near full, anyway, after he eats this wave. Trundle's passive coming into play right here, and Ed being under as much pressure as he is, is not very good. You saw Ping actually go down on the top tier one outer turret, and First Blood Tower is still up for both teams, and SK Telecom, I mean, in both games, in game number one and game number two, one of the big problems that MVP was facing is that they were all losing in CS scores. Oh, yeah, going right back, face checking there into Profit. He's gonna get bounced back towards him, Buckler for the trade, and, and Profit keeping this top lane aggressive. Uh, Ed really forced to kind of back up what he mentioned in that uh, interview about this matchup being pretty skill-based, even though uh, now that uh, Quicksilver Sash does not help Poppy out as it used to versus Trundle to remove the ult, uh, Profit uh, still having a little bit of a rough spot after giving up that initial uh, kill. Yep. And right now they're both going to recall. And uh, so touching on the, the CS deficits again in every single lane right now, that's just a testament to SK Telecom are mechanically outplaying their opponents basically at every point. And that also applies pressure because last game SK Telecom went up uh, three towers to one over MVP. And it's looking like that same problem is going to happen again in this game for MVP. And all SK right. Telecom. We're going to see the 2v2 top lane. There's Banky coming in, but he finds himself in now a 1v2. His Profit can't really get there to help him out. There's the Repel to try to escape there. Bang in bottom lane. There's actually going on there as well. We're going to watch the untimely demise of Bengi as MVP finds a kill back their way. But Max, hopefully, will get a replay of exactly how that happened. Bang able to equalize. Yeah, a 2v2 solo kill is not something that you want to happen. And we're, I mean, we're seeing it on the bottom right-hand screen right now as the tower is being raised on the main, and you can see the curtain call coming out. Whoa. Oh my god. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful tongue lash right there, and I think that MVP was not expecting that damage to come out from Bang as Maha had heal up. Yeah, a little bit uncharacteristic there, and especially not able to just like walk side to side, maybe try to you know, do a little bit of a better job dodging those. Uh, bottom out of the map, Faker able to steal away a blue buff along with Wolf for the uh, the assistance, and now looking for Scuttle Crab there as uh, as well. So yeah, uncharacteristic death there. Uh, no summon heal used to maybe save Max uh, at uh, from dying there. What do you think of really about the trade overall? A kill apiece for both teams. Who got the better of those? Uh, well, any sort of kills that are going to happen. Oh, okay. Ian, that's not where you want to head into. Immediately killed off from face checking the wrong bush. Yeah, and they got Max's flash out of him. So that's not going to be good for MVP. So, I mean, everything going right for SK Telecom right now, and everything's basically going wrong for MVP. Yes, they did get a kill up on Poppy. But that's not going to matter when Jin and Rai start getting kills on them because the Inferno Drake is just going to continue to scale and we have another Dragon coming up in 15 seconds here and SK Telecom are going to be in the driver's seat to manage to get this. 
turret will go down. You mentioned first turret still being there. Looks like SKT heard you, and they will take it out. Uh, that's not going to be a great, uh, great news for MVP, who still find themselves at a gold deficit afterwards. We're going to watch once again as Ian races into the wrong bush. Yeah, Ian was going into the wrong bush, did not know that Faker and Bengi were waiting, and Max having to be forced to flash away right there. And this is all pretty bad. Now, Ian didn't lose any summoner spells, but Max losing his flash is definitely going to make him very susceptible later on, especially uh, to any sort of a curtain call from Bang and Wolf. And uh, the 2v2 kill is a very real threat right now beyond is it blue buff right now, but his route is going to need to go to the left-hand side of the map if he wants to provide any assistance to AD, er, Ed up in the top lane because Ed doesn't have teleport. And with the Inferno Drake being up, Ed needs to come down to bottom. Keeping an eye on it, uh, Ed definitely needed down here, like you mentioned, the Inferno Drake started out, and this would be Inferno Drake number two to an SK Telecom team that can definitely scale insanely well off of it. No uh, assistance there, and the Ed that was required <laughs> got his hands full top lane with Prophet, who even after being punished for going over aggressive previously, not afraid to go right back on it, and here comes Faker to help him out. Now trying for the poppy counter on the rise, Faker able to dodge it with an immediate flash, and not the counter it needed that time. It's Faker to come up with his first kill of the game. Yeah, and now that's going to probably be top tier one turret falling, and this is really problematic as Prophet is just super far ahead. And you can see that interaction right there actually a little bit weird. You would think that Ed's uh, ultimate would have been canceled, but nonetheless, SK Telecom able to pick up this kill, and they'll be rewarded with the top one uh, tier one outer turret. And now in bottom lane, remember, Max doesn't have flash, so this can get very dangerous. We'll see. Maha taking an absolutely brutal amount of damage back his way. Wolf forced to flash away as he loses all of his health. No plans to find the kill there onto Wolf. And here comes the curtain call. Trying to trade this damage out. The last hit there will be shot, but it won't kill off anyone from MVP. Oh my god, the deadly flourish. Almost deadly enough to pick off Max. And even that last little bit of damage from the death by our touch, not enough in the end. So they will be forced to back off right there, and I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if Faker picks up that Scuttle Crab, goes back and shoves in mid lane while SKT killed the bottom turret. And, I mean, this is a 3-0 turret lead, double Inferno Drake for a Jin and Rise team composition, and Bengi still has the choice to actually just go Glass Cannon Elise. And, I mean, honestly, at this point, it might not be that bad of an idea. We can see Prophet going for the Titanic Hydra, probably into full tank to just further enable his carries. Uh, no need to really go Ravenous Hydra uh, with this lead that SK Telecom has right now because Ryze and Jin are going to do all the damage anyway. Yeah, absolutely incredible damage. Now with two Inferno Drakes, so much to look forward to here for the SK Telecom lineup who find themselves one game away from heading to Busan. There's a hundred million won on the line, LS. It's about $90,000 and SKT, fresh off of winning a couple million USD, find themselves poised to make one step further winning yet more. Now Faker <laughs> gonna get the 19-minute uh, uh, luxury buff here at the Rift Herald that will persist for quite a while as it is taken pretty much to the last moment. Yeah, so this buff is basically gonna last for the entire game and a 19-minute Rift Herald buff on Trundle is very, very problematic and it's already uh, been a problematic matchup for Ed so far at least up here in the top lane. And I mean, at this point, MVP are just posturing and they don't really know what to do. Malzahar only has his first core item. Uh, first core item completed for Maha, and it's actually a Yumu's Ghost Blade. Not something I would have expected to see. Right, now we've actually seen that earlier on in this tournament. Uh, day one, we saw the Yomu's Ash. And what was so interesting about that is because not only is it you know less traditional for Ashes to buy, but uh, also when it comes to the math, I'm not exactly sure that works out either. I think the, the higher damage uh, route to go ideally would be the crit build, but uh, with some of the reworks to the way the crit and slows work on Ash, maybe that's the reasoning behind it. Uh, either way, MVP up towards the top half of the map, and. We'll have to see whether or not this rotation is strong enough for MVP. What's their way back into the game now that things have started to really maybe get out of control for SK Telecom? Their only way back in at this point is going to be sort of like the mistakes that uh, they themselves were making last game, except SKT has to make them. Well, here comes the curtain call, just trying to find something. Uh, nothing really vulnerable 
in the range of it, and so Bang will cancel to get some cooldown. Now here comes a big Ash area, will catch out Wolf. He will not get silenced there as Ian misses it. Now MVP gonna stand on top of that Strangle Thor. It's uh, not necessarily a great spot, but they'll find a kill onto Wolf. Now chasing off onto Prophet, who exits towards the top half of the map, and 4v5 the situation now. Uh, Ed low, but does have teleport available for when he uh, comes back from base. Yeah, and so that's gonna be MVP's way back into the game. They need to find picks on isolated targets or find a way to isolate the target in itself by threatening more damage maybe uh, due to a positional error from SK Telecom. And they need to do this over and over and over and they really need to scale up to that point where Poppy and Malzahar both have three or four items. Sieging here on the mid lane turret. There's a flash of the knockup onto Bang. He's gonna drop down as it's Bang for Maha to take him out. Bengi now taking a decent amount of damage, but Ian has to stay safe there as well. Maha almost dying there at the end, but it's Bengi to come in and get the execute. The execution line on the back line from SKT comes through for two more kills, and now MVP, the ones finding themselves being routed. <laughs> nice dash over the wall there from Ed to get himself safely away. In the end, it's a two for one in favor of SK Telecom after what started out looking so good for MVP. Yeah, it was looking really good for MVP indeed, but SKT are too far ahead right now now and even without one of their members bang they're still able to dish out so much damage and right now profit is so tanky as well and i mean that whole fight came at a very big cost of a lot of summoner spells for mvp and that's definitely going to diminish their ability to get picks later on so in this replay you can see that beyond he was able to get the kill onto bang and uh, at this point, Faker not able to find the kill onto Maha, partly due to that exhaust that came out. You saw Ian micromanaging his champion to sort of stutter step in front of Maha to try to absorb any spells being thrown by Faker his way, but it was all in vain as Bengi and Prophet able to find the kills on them both in the end. Wolf with a little bit of indecisiveness, actually. You saw him pulling Faker back slightly, but then returning him to the front of the fight, and here we go, right into another one. It's curtain call. This time we'll slow the exit from MVP. Banging any forward the Proto Belt. Damage on to Beyond down to half health. Now, SK Telecom exiting the Dragon, but not before taking it down for their third Dragon of the game, this time an Ocean Drake. And so we see that Bengi is actually electing into the Glass Cannon Elise. So they will be using Trundle for all of their tanky needs. And uh, Elise and Rise and Jin are all super scary damage well, threats. Where's Ed headed? He's got Faker on the back of him and Wolf right in front. Ed picks up a buckler and stays in there. Maha gets sniped in the meantime. MVP losing one, now looking poised to lose the second. He'll pass through the gate into the base and stay just barely alive. But Maha getting picked there will make this defense uh, very difficult for MVP. Yep, and that was another careless death by Maha. He had heal up. You know that the summoner or the spell was gonna hit from Bang, and yet he didn't cast it. Beyond, Beyond. a little scary situation right there. And right now, uh, SK Telecom are looking poised to capture Baron. Every single lane for MVP is pretty disadvantageous, and it's not even like SK Telecom don't actually have turret penetrating abilities via the curtain call. Certainly do, and now with the revive, Maha might be looking for an arrow thrown from base. Maybe find those picks that you mentioned earlier. MVP desperately need to try to find some footholds. They fall further and further behind in gold. We're gonna watch this Maha execution. Too much damage. Oh, and just the tip. Right there, I mean, this is just a super chaotic fight where MVP, they benefit from being grouped up and together. That way the Voidlings have more potency and there's just chaos happening Return everywhere. back to live for another execution there by Bang. He's cashing in for his third kill of the game, this time on the other MVP carry. This is what you said MVP needed to do to get back in the game, but SKT are doing it to get further ahead. Yep. And at this point, I mean, you almost basically have to call the game because double Inferno Drake at 25 minutes with a almost 10,000 gold lead and SK Telecom looking way cleaner in this series than they did uh, against KEG. And uh, it just, it's really, really nice to walk their, watch. They're being very active, very proactive with their advantage. And the way that they're moving around the map is significantly better than their previous series. Yeah, exactly, and uh, we actually, uh, okay, we're going to see this again. Ian actually has his passive broken immediately, and then it's curtain call to uh, call him home. 
He gets taken out there. Uh, now, you mentioned earlier, uh, referenced their previous series. Uh, that time around in their uh, games versus KEG, uh, they had a lot of uh, they had a lot of momentum. They secured themselves a lot of advantages, and then just kind of walked around for 10 to 15 minutes. So this time. Uh, being very, very active across the map, like you said. So, uh, their actions currently, what's the next step here? Okay, well, <laughs> finding more and more picks. That time, Exhaust saving Max's life. Can the Repel get Bengi out alive? He will be suppressed and taken out. Now, there's the arrow follow-up on Wolf. He will get knocked out, and that is not going to be his uh, his way out. He'll take the hard road back to home. Uh, taken out, so it's a uh, almost kill there on to Benki. He narrowly survives, and so in the end, it's only one pick for MVP. But is that the kind of picks that they need? Well, it is the type of picks that they need, but they're going to need to do that about 10 more <laughs> times if they want to get back into this match. And <clears throat> right now, uh, Voidstaff just got picked up for Faker, so his ability to shred through beyond an edge just got significantly better. Uh, I mean, Dragon going to be coming up and probably around two and a half minutes now. And that's likely to go over to SK Telecom as well. Oh. And you just have to wonder, when are they finally going to get back? Oh, and here comes Faker Raha <laughs> getting out of dodge with a flash over the wall. Beyond getting a little bit slowed out there on the end of the curtain call. The knock up there on to Bengi. He might be the next one to fall, and he will. Well, Bengi uh, stepping too far forward, not having his flash. And as you can see now, Dragon going to be spawning in about a minute and 50 seconds. And MVP, they are finding picks, but the problem is they need to keep doing this over and over. And it's significantly easier to make the picks when Wolf is not around to devour his own teammate, to save them from the suppressions or the stuns or snares that MVP have a lot of. They certainly do. Uh, MVP off of those two picks will be able to find themselves their first turret of the game there in the mid lane. Uh, Faker in the meantime, top lane pushing that down. But uh, I mean, MVP at least kind of taking your advice and finding little tiny advantages, not allowing SKT to get away with too much. Right now, MVP going back into a 1-3-1 a type of style, and this is uh, mostly enabled due to the fact that Ryze, via his ultimate, able to join his team at a moment's call, and Prophet looking like he'll probably actually get this turret. Guys, for Gauntlet props, plus the Rift Herald, able to assist him in raising that structure pretty quickly. Beyond not going to get here in time, and I mean, the next step here is to have Prophet stay in bottom lane, and then basically bait out a Baron because it's very unlikely that MVP is going to be able to win any sort of a, a 4v4 fight without Ed present. Well, there's Ed and Prophet content to be the immortal combatants locked in an eternal struggle down there. We'll see who comes out on top as uh, we do finally get a chance to watch that. It is the Prophet Show. As he is taking it to Ed who's forced back underneath his base turret. MVP doing a decent job trying to survive and defend their upper turret as SK Telecom content walks back between that mid lane and top. All right, well, oh, uh, <laughs> Ed actually gets solo killed. <laughs> okay, surprise. Maybe he will uh, think twice about saying that no top laner is good against Poppy. Well, uh, uh, Prophet Strundle has been phenomenal against him in this series. He did say it depended on the player, and as SK Telecom go towards Baron, we're about to get a replay of exactly how that happened. The subjugate and a flash to dodge the Poppy L. Beautifully well played there, and it does depend on the player. Prophet, too good. Beyond now going for a Baron Steel arrow coming forward. Beyond dropping way too low. Faker in the front lines to take it down. He's gonna get it blasted! There's the steal for MVP! They take it away! It's the score move to keep them in it, but in the end, Faker's still trying to find more and more picks. They take out Maha, Ed dead from previously, but a Baron buff on the rest of MVP. And the, the, the whole way that this actually just happened is Bengi didn't have his smite up while they were doing that. So when Baron was at 1400 HP, it becomes a very real threat for Beyond to be able to get in there and win that contestion of Baron at that point. That's a really unfortunate loss for SK Telecom. Now, Dragon is up. They are going to get it. Unfortunately for them, it is a Cloud Drake where the map is already busted completely wide open. So not going to be the biggest pickup. They definitely want to get that down as fast as possible to uh, start the, uh, the cooldown for Elder Dragon to spawn. That will be the next Dragon on the map. But uh, a little bit of a breather now for MVP. So you can see that the snare goes up and there was 
2,000 hit points on the Baron. Had they all just actually focused on killing it, you can see Bang was oh. really hesitating. Uh, and the rest of the members of SK Telecom and MVP really captured that opportunity and managed to get the Baron for themselves. Yeah, they definitely did not let that one go. Uh, only a two minutes uh, window of time here for MVP to really establish uh, some sort of advantage or really just use this Baron to hold on uh, for what will be two minutes that they might not have been able to had it not been for Beyond's heroic maneuver. Somewhere out there, Score senses a disturbance in the forest. He's like, I know what that feels like. Uh, beyond definitely helping uh, helping MVP stay in this, but even in the, in the face of this Baron buff, does SKT still have what they need to push in? Well, SK Telecom can definitely find their way in, but it's going to be a little bit difficult against the Baron enhanced minions. You can see Prophet can't even really actually kill the minions when they are buffed up by that Baron. And right now, uh, I mean, they're just going to probably wait for the Baron buff duration to end. Ed coming up here to try to kill Prophet. They might actually find the kill onto him. Ice point for some additional slows. There comes the subjugate. Prophet is a monster, and it does not look like MVP have what it takes to take him down. With that committal up towards the top half of the map, it opens up mid lane for SK Telecom, who will crack that inhibitor. <laughs> <laughs> as my voice cracks, along with the base turret and the inhibitor. That's going to be the first one going down for SK Telecom. And SKT... I mean, MVP like trying to find the flank in here. The knockback it will at least save one of them. Trying to f follow forward. And I actually thought more was going to happen there, so... Apologies for interrupting. SKT turn it back around. SKT do turn it back around, indeed. And they do have that Water Dragon, so they will get a little bit of hit points and mana back as they move over to continue their siege on the bottom tier 3 turret. And this is basically all that they need to do right now as uh, Prophet is knocking on that door up in top lane. We all know how that lane goes, or at least how it went previously. Prophet does not have a splash up to avoid the poppy all this time, but it's on cooldown, so he doesn't have to worry about it now. Watching out for the flank as MVP try to come in and find anything, any opportunity to catch SK Telecom out. Yeah, and this is actually MVP's opportunity to try to make something happen because SK Telecom is pooling a lot of gold on all of their members. So even though they have 11,000 gold advantage, uh, if all of their members are pooling 2k gold apiece, that's not actually really applicable to the current battle that might be at hand. Now, the gold amount on them all is probably not going to be that high, but it's still noticeable that the advantage uh, in gold is a little bit deceptive, although their stats are bolstered by that double Inferno Drake, and it does make it a little bit difficult for MVP to really take them on in a head-on engagement, but that was their opportunity, and they lost out on it. So we find ourselves at 33 minutes in. The first inhibitor of the game has gone down. How much does that change the landscape here as MVP try to not just survive, but maybe ultimately come out with a win? Well, uh, MVP have almost reached that three item spike on uh, Ed and Ian. So Malzahar definitely going to be dealing a lot more damage now as this game moves on. Guardian Angel up, though, on Prophet and Bengi, and that basically foretells that they are finally looking for a team fight, and they want to make a fight happen, as the Guardian Angel is extremely obnoxious against MVP's team comp. Red buff being contested here will reset, but no, the crit's too big! And Bang will take that one away. A minus 4,000 gold Baron anti-power play from MVP who do hang on, but still take more and more deficits. Yep. So now SK Telecom struggling to find a way into their base, and this is actually an issue that we saw against uh, KEG in their series last week, where even with a very large gold advantage, they couldn't find a way to really drive it home. Hesitation uh, definitely makes them more and more vulnerable for more hero plays to catch uh, them out. Instead, they will be the ones to catch Beyond and send him back to base with about a quarter HP. Pressing forward and not one, but three lanes here as SK Telecom looks to collapse here on this upper turret. Maha and Max and Ian up to try to defend, but they will not be successful. Arrow thrown out there. It will miss Bang just barely. He does cancel his ultimate as now Beyond Beset will be forced to back off to the Nexus turrets. Ian's a little bit caught out there as the inhibitors start to fall. 
Profit crushing the bottom one right now as we speak, getting in onto it. Instead, he opts to rejoin SK Telecom, who push in onto the Nexus. Little bit by little bit, Faker taking pot shots at one Nexus turret. This will be the fight for MVP to try to hang on. Beyond takes the brunt of the damage there. Stranglethorns won't find any knockups there. Profit jumps forward for a kill onto Beyond, and it's going to be Bengi, the first one to drop Guardian Angel to revive him. SK Telecom will need to defend their spidery jungler. He'll stay alive for now. Bango will drop and is actually going to maybe reset those Malefic Visions onto Bengi. No, he survives there. And Faker with a turnaround kill for a double. Taking out Maha and making this defense for Ian at the Nexus a little more difficult. Yeah, and Profit at full HP. Right now, Faker trying to get the kill onto Ed. <laughs> Turns this out, is a super extended fight. This is actually the longest fight. That's why I kind of turned it back over to LS for the color play-by-play. -play. This is the fight that never ends. And finally, it looks like we will get a breather. SK Telecom unable to finish the game, so stalwart defense there. We're about to see exactly how that happens. Yeah, so basically, the fight started off with Ed botching his ultimate. And fortunately uh, for MVP, they were able to find a kill onto Wolf, but it came at the cost of Beyond Life due to Profit using that flash to get on top of him. Bengi went down, but their damage output isn't really that high right now, and you can see that Maha not able to find that final kill onto Bengi, and also we didn't get to catch a glimpse of it, but Mox, Max mistimed his exhaust onto Faker, and that actually resulted in his own death. And uh, SK Telecom able to get the three inhibitors down, uh, thus enabling the seven versus five which is uh, basically because two super minions now coming out of every single lane generally requires two members of the team to defend against that just at the Nexus turrets. The little raptor that could running back away there as MVP try to push out of their base and get into a position for this bear. And now Elder Dragon going to be empowering SK Telecom. Like I said, they just did take that out. And thanks to having four dragons previous, uh, that's actually going to last for a little bit of a while now. Baron started up here. MVP, this is yet another forced opportunity for them to have uh, a chance at getting back into it, but not this time, says uh, Bengi, and he will secure Baron buff this time for SK Telecom. This will probably be the final endgame push. The inhibitor in mid lane has respawned, but that is going to fall in probably about 10 seconds here as SK Telecom march up mid and via the curtain call. Yep, there it is. They do break the passive on Ian. He's back to the Nexus turrets. Fully channeled out there. A big crit finds the penetration into the back line to hit Ian and force him back to the fountain. Ed channeling his ultimate. Let's it go to knock all of those super minions back away from these turrets. Keeping the pressure on as SKT slow and steadily, slowly and steadily push in onto the turrets. One will fall as Faker takes it out. Pressure onto the second one. MVP have to make it find an opportunity, and they will head to the back line, but it's beyond who actually winds up dropping first. Faker actually all take forward to try to get the position to catch more of MVP out. They're onto the fountain, and that is where they will stay. Four dead, and maybe even Maha next to fall on the fountain. SK Telecom may look for another one, and they will dive the fountain to find, try to find the last hit. It's going to be a full five-man ace as SK Telecom take a 2-0 victory over MVP. Yeah, and that was a very clean-cut finish. A little, uh, a little slow at one point, but... SK Telecom performing way better in this series than they did against KEG. And uh, you can't really fault anything. And Profit again shows off super impressive performances. Very, very good games there from the uh, the new guy on SK Telecom squad. Uh, functioning very well, uh, fitting into a veteran team. Very difficult to do, so congratulations there. Uh, Faker doing hashtag things Faker does, both in game number one with a wacky Galio pick that is actually just insane. So interesting to go back and check out some of the numbers on that coming to Flex Q near you. And of course, game two, a 5-1-8 and eight rise score. Looks pretty good to me. So it'll be interesting to see who do you think deserves the MVP for that two game win for SK Telecom? I feel like it's probably, well, it's, it's pretty hard because uh, Bane found uh, a lot of picks that mm -hmm. they were mostly due to the error of the opponent, but still, like, he, he opened up a lot for them. So I feel like it's either going to come down to Faker or. Uh, Bang. And in this last team fight, I mean, it's just what you expect. The true damage is still ticking, so that basically uh, 
just doesn't let Poppy really do too much. And at this point, SK Telecom way too far ahead, and they can just bulldoze over their opposition. And there's really not much to say. They could, they could just roll their face on their keyboard and delete MVP in this final team fight. And delete them they will. Maha defenseless on the fountain. And while SK Telecom were sacrificed their lives to complete the ace, they do punch their tricket, their their trip, their ticket. That was the uh, combination of those words, the Busan. Yeah. And I will say that Faker's Rise performance and the Galio uh, in game number one were really, really nice to see. Uh, he had uh, pretty high CS both in both games and his ultimates uh, on Rise also enabled a lot, and he also managed to dodge uh, Ed Poppy in game number two, which started a snowball again up in top lane and burst the game wide open. Now it's going to take us into our uh, MVP interview. First, we're going to remind you of our next set coming up. It is the Rocks Tigers facing off against the Jin Air Green Wings, so stick around for that. And here we go. It is an interview with our MVP. It is the mid laner for SK Telecom T1, Faker. Get a chance to ask him a few of our opening questions. Of course, a lot of eyes on his Galio picks, so really interested in finding out his logic behind that. So previously, you said you wanted to introduce a pick that people may not have seen before. Was Galio that pick? Baker saying, I've been, I've been preparing Galio for a long time until this point, uh, or but until this point, I never got a chance to play him. Uh, so I honestly believe that every champion is good. I don't believe that there are bad champions. Even picks like Nunu, I think, are really good. So some strong words there about uh, design from Faker. Uh, do you have any uh, anything prepared other than Galio? My question for Faker is, for SK Telecom, Kespa Cup is the only tournament they have not won. Does that add extra pressure to you for your performances in this year's Kespa Cup? Ah, Kespa Cup has not won yet. <laughs> 네, 그런 것들이 이런 캐스파컵이 SK에 갖는 의미가 있을까? 어떤 의미가 있을까요? 어, 뭐 캐스파컵이 저는 유일하게 우승을 못 하긴 했지만 네, 네. 뭐 그런 And Faker is saying, uh, although this is the one tournament that we have not won, uh, I think this is more about uh, giving consistent performances and performing our best in every tournament. And Faker saying, uh, I think every tournament is actually pretty equal in value. <laughs> Helios saying, I feel a little bit uncomfortable because of the height difference. So that's why Helios is going to walk forward so that the, uh, the depth perception is on his side. <laughs> saying, Faker, you're actually a bit taller than I thought you'd be. <laughs> so the question uh, here by Helios coming in for Faker. And he was asking, so Faker, uh, we have something between us going on. <laughs> Faker says, uh, I don't know, I don't know what you mean. Helio saying, as soon as I saw your rise way back when, I knew you were as good as ambition way back in the day. And Helio uh, at bragging rights saying that he added Faker onto his friends list first. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Faker saying, actually, I don't think Helios is on my friends list. <laughs> Helios saying, it's not my fault. I'm sorry, but my head coach told me to get rid of you. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully uh, they'll get to add each other back on their friends list soon. And a nice handshake to each other's no hard feelings. <laughs> The lesson of the day, the uh, one who is uh, better at gaining it is the older one and demands respect. 
So referencing our next match, will it be Rox or Jin Air? What does Faker think about our next matchup? <laughs> Faker says, uh, you know, the supposed weaker team seems to be coming out on top these days, so maybe uh, hinting that Jin Air might have an advantage. So Faker saying, uh, you know, there's a lot of weak teams like SK Telecom that, you know, are, are making it to the top of uh, tournaments. So, yeah, he expects uh, good things to come in their uh, next match and in the future matches to come. <laughs> So we'll see Faker again at uh, Busan as SK Telecom will be traveling down there to compete in the semi-finals. Final words moving forward in the Caspa Cup from Faker. Faker saying, uh, I was really disappointed when we were dis eliminated from the Kespa Cup last time. So I really want to win this Kespa Cup. Last time we went to Busan, we were only there for a couple of days. So uh, this time we're down in Busan for a little bit longer. So that's it for our MVP interview with Faker, the mid laner for SK Telecom T1, closing out their 2-0 victory here against MVP. Of course, that will send us into our second best of three. It'll be coming up in just a little bit. It's the Rock Tigers versus the Jin Air Greenwings. We hope to see you there. Yeah.